Hi all, just continuing on with the Rhino uh, basic videos uh, as an introduction to this program. What I thought I'd talk about now is a little bit on rendering. So what we're going to show you here is just how to get a base rendering out. So if you go to the rendering tab at the top of the program, left click on that, you'll see if you scroll down to the tab that says current renderer, there's a whole series of rendering options there or re rendering engines that the, the program will run under. Most likely on your machine at college the default one will be Rhino Render but a couple to explore which I recommend for a little bit of a more polished finish will be Flamingo or for a more conceptual finish uh, Penguin Render. Okay so what I'll do now is just press the basic render and that's the big blue button on the tab there and you can sort of see that's the rendering we get at the default setting. So the default setting should be set to the viewport size of the computer. What I want to draw your attention to though is if you right click on that big blue button you'll see render properties come up. Now the render that you get out of that at the viewpoint setting is fine if you're doing a presentation on screen. It most likely will be at 72 dpi which is the standard setting you'll get for a computer screen. But if you want it for print reproduction, you should be uh, jogging that up to about 200 dpi. And normally, uh, we'll cover this in more detail in Photoshop, but you're looking for an A3 reproduction, you're looking for something around four, four and a half thousand pixels wide. Okay, if you can just remember that. Okay, the next thing is if you want to, you can also produce the rendering in a variety of different ways and you'll see these four tabs down the bottom there indicate what you can also have. So you can render with the curves on and off or the surface edges on and off. So if I click OK you'll see on the interface there that the edges come up. Okay, so if I quickly render that you get the line work in place as well. Now this can be useful con for conceptual renders or more particularly if you're doing a traditional rendering over the top. Once you've printed this out, those lines are invaluable for projecting uh, vanishing point lines and the like. Okay, let's just quickly try another rendering approach. So if we click it to, say, Flamingo, and I'll click Render Properties, I'll just click those ISO curves and curves off and we'll render it again. And you'll notice that when we switch to a different rendering engine, one, the rendering time changes because it calculates everything in a slightly different fashion. But you'll notice even with this fairly basic ray trace renderer, you get more polished results in terms of reflections, a little bit more depth and a little bit more clarity in terms of how shadows are resolved. Okay. Well, that's a very basic introduction. The key points to remember is make sure that the size of rendering is appropriate to your needs at the end of the day by adjusting the render property tab. So you need to adjust the rendering, the, the resolution size to suit. And the last one there is just remember that big blue button. That's what you get your rendering from. Okay, thanks all. Bye.